So a lot of the projects I've been doing recently involves RGB and of course ESP32s. Now these little single board computers are awesome because they can run WLED and there's pretty much nothing else involved. You don't have to have anything else connected to this. You literally provide it with power and then you connect an RGB LED strip that of course is addressable. Now, unfortunately, I have noticed a little bit of an issue with the Wi-Fi on these ESP32s. They have tiny little built-in antennas, and unfortunately, the distance that it can sort of travel over is not great. Now, unfortunately, when connecting it to your Wi-Fi, I seem to find at the moment, if it's not in the room with the router, then unfortunately, you're going to get either very low Wi-Fi signal strength or no connectivity whatsoever. So basically that's about as much use as a chocolate teapot. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to extend the range of the ESP32s as cheaply and as minimum effort as possible so we can get all the ESP32 devices in other rooms of the house without having to worry about them not connecting. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top down camera, have a look at these ESP32s that I got, and these are custom made by JLC PCB. And of course they are the sponsor of today's video. So let's go ahead and look at the ESP32s and that built-in antenna. So if you've ever ordered custom PCBs from JLC, they'll have these extra parts on here. Now you'll only receive these if you've had the components put on. So the pick and place machine uses these so it can put the components on. So it kind of holds it securely. So all you need to do is break these off and you can just break them by hand like so. And then we'll put these parts in the bin. Now, of course, if we take a closer look, we can see that built in antenna. So there's probably no surprise why it doesn't work very well. But what does work very well is the sponsor of today's video, JLC PCB. They can bring your ideas to life in their state-of-the-art facility. They will manufacture your PCBs and they always have experts on hand just to make sure everything's going to go through smoothly. They offer a very fast shipping service and of course they are very competitive on pricing. It's super easy to order. So let's order some PCBs for this project. So over on the JLC PCB website, we're just going to drag and drop those Gerber files across. And once they've loaded, we can see a picture of the ESP32 boards. It's going to show us how many layers it's got, and then we can choose how many we want. Then if you go further down the page, you can have some other options. You can choose the thickness of the PCB. 1.6 millimeter is a standard, but if you do need it thinner, you do have that option. You can also choose all different colors like purple, red, blue, green, black, or white. White and black is the favorite, and I always stay away from the green ones. They're just the default. So five of these cost $2.10. Don't forget, there's always lots of coupons and discounts going on, and you don't have to have fast shipping. There is global standard, so you can get these for under 10 bucks shipped. So for more information and the latest offers, click the link in the description below. So thanks again for JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and of course check that link in the description below and get some PCBs made today. So we've had a look at the ESP32 and I think we can extend the built-in antenna. We're going to use some very thin copper enamel wire and I'm hoping this is going to work just by connecting it and extending that built-in antenna. Now, you probably remember the video that we did the Philips Hue alternative DIY sort of RGB lamps. So I made two of those, one for my side of the bed and one for my wife's. And then I made two of them to go either side of the TV in the living room. Now, my little studio is upstairs and the ones in the bedroom, which are basically the other side of this wall, they seem to connect okay, albeit not a very strong signal. 
but the ones in the living room they're quite far away from the router and unfortunately they won't connect so i'm not actually using those ones at the moment just because you can't control them so let's go ahead and add this very crude quick cheap sort of antenna fix to one of my ESP32s that I've tried connecting downstairs, it won't connect. And then of course, we'll see if it does actually make any difference to the Wi-Fi signal strength. So the first step is to sort of scratch away the etching on here to expose the copper underneath. So the internal antenna kind of comes off and squiggles up. As you can see from this image where I've scratched it off at the top and you can clearly see the internal trace. So once we've got that scratched off and exposed that copper, we're going to take some 0.2 millimeter enamel wire. So it's got a coating on it and we're going to burn the coating off with some flux and some solder and we're going to attach it to the ESP32 just like so. We're going to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Then I'm just going to wrap it around this screwdriver to make it look like a little bit of an antenna. But there we go. Now, if we go into WLED on my phone and scroll down, yes, I do have lots of ESP32s and RGB lights. But as you can see, we've got TV light left and TV light right. And the Wi-Fi signal next to it, it's now got full signal. So now we can control the TV lights in the living room and we're not going to have any problems at all. So there we have it. Adding just a tiny little bit of this copper wire has made a massive difference to the signal strength. So we're now getting full signal strength for those RGB lights in the living room. And that's great news. This wire is really cheap. It's really thin and of course it's enamel coated. And then all I basically did was wrapped it around a pencil just so you can make it a little bit more like an antenna but this has made a massive difference. So I've got a really cool idea. How about we make an ESP32 junction box that has four ESP32s in it, a custom PCB, and then external antennas. We can use those ones that Wi-Fi cards use because I'm sure we can get the sort of connection soldered onto the ESP32. So sort of bypass the that built-in antenna and we're going to make a really cool ESP32 junction box with four ESP32s, lots of outputs because you can have more than one output. So if you decided, you know what, I want to have lots of RGB things and strips, but I don't want ESP32s in each device. I'd like a junction box that handles all the ESP32 and power delivery to those LED light strips, whatever they may be in, whether they're around the wall, whether it's like one of these multi-board down lights, etc., etc. It's going to be a really cool project, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we can get the casing CNC machined from JLC 3DP. So that about wraps it up for this video. In conclusion, yes, you can extend the antenna just by scratching it off, soldering on a little bit of wire. And then that's just going to give you a lot better signal. Don't know how far that signal is going to go yet. But I guess if you guys test this yourself, let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you've done anything else differently to extend the Wi-Fi range on the ESP32, again, let me know in the comments below. So that wraps it up for this video, but if you enjoy my content, you know what to do by now. Like, subscribe, and then don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future updates. I'm JP, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.